thank you very much dr zubair very comprehensive talk mashallah we know that it's a very huge topic and you covered it very well uh, in one hour session uh, i must congratulate you for that uh, now uh, let's switch gear uh, i would like to have uh, dr kamran babar for its expert opinion regarding ecg talk station over to you dr kamran all right uh, you can hear me well yes yes we can great um dr zubair mamtaz i congratulate you for an excellent overview i think it's one of the best presentations on ecg that i have uh, attended even um i felt like you have almost revised the whole cardiology in just one hour and i think it's a superb job that you did um the salient things that i would like our trainees to focus on uh is that most important thing that he started was um, a very important one the standardization because many a times you will be shown an ecg with um, either the paper speed being fast or the qrs complex is bigger or smaller based on just the standardization and you need to be able to figure that um when i train my pgs um the most important point that i like them to make sure they understand is that all these leads that we are seeing in the ecg these are your reporters and um, i really thank um, uh, dr zubair of showing intracardiac electrocardiograms because um these are really um the the leads which their location tells you what they are looking at and you are asking their perspective what do you think about this beat do you see any, any electrical activity so in surface ecg that we see on the chest are very similar that you ask the inferior leads 2 3 avf what is their perspective if the electric current is coming towards them it's going to be a positive spike while if an electric current is going away from them it's going to be a negative spike and this is pretty basic concept in an ecg your eyes see what your mind knows and that's what most of the ecgs um actually focus towards knowing the clinical scenario and to look at what part to focus is the key in ecg diagnosis um i think he beautifully did electrophysiological coverage of the long qts the epsilon wave in avrd brugada syndrome both the svts with narrow complex tachycardias um you guys know how to look at atrial fibrillation and the questions which are associated with all these clinical scenarios are the part of your examination techniques and tokes because these are the small stimuli out of which the examiner is going to create yeah. questions and ask you and i think this is um, a a very good um uh, way of Achoo. examining um the short qt with the uh, hypercalcemia uh, prolonged long qt with hypocalcemia the dialysis patients with hyperkalemia um these are really important for you to identify the osborn waves that we see in hypothermia how to differentiate uh, pericarditis versus um a um um early repolarization syndrome these are also really important clinical points that you should be able to identify clinical context always is really important because you're seeing a patient with shortness of breath prolonged uh, immobilization you have to think about someone with sinus tachycardia hypoxia about pulmonary embolism and what to look for um uh, dr zubair was absolutely right the s1q3 t3 is really something that we see only in minority of patients up to 20 to 30% but in majority of the cases it's sinus tachycardia that we end up seeing in this clinical scenario your index of suspicion should be high enough that you start the treatment of these patients right away um i think there were excellent presentations in terms of uh, device related ecgs uh, the pacemaker functionality where is it sensing whether it's pacing appropriately or not these are really um, i think a very nice set of ecgs and excellent for our pg trainees intracardiac tracing is always my favorite but thank god i'm just a interventionalist i go towards the plumbing of the heart and i leave the smart stuff to my electrophysiology consults um consultants so i really enjoyed this session and dr zubair i again congratulate you i think it was an excellent uh, uh presentation a very nice overview and i really thoroughly enjoyed it thank you very much thank you
Thank you very much, Dr. Kamran Babur. Great talk. Uh, in the beginning, that we I told you that we have two expert panelists. The one was uh, Dr. Kamran Babur, which I introduced you. And the next panelist we have is uh, Dr. Fawad Faru. Initially, he was not present. Uh, in the beginning, when I was in, uh, introducing you, Dr. Fawad Faru, I said he doesn't need any introduction. His name is his introduction. So <laughs> it's not because uh, you were not there, but uh, OK, over to you, Dr. Fawad Faru, for your expert opinion. First of all, thank you, Hashim. Thank you, Kamran, for being there with such a nice, nice comments. And I was feeling a bit unlucky that I missed that presentation. And especially the last EP tracing, I thought even I am going to be failed because we were, when we were uh, training, we, we really go through ECGs. There are very few EP tracings, but they are EH and HV interval. That's all we have to look for. And one or two tracings used to come in talks. But nowadays, it's very important, certainly, because when you see ECG with the help of EP, EP tracing, you come to know the exact objective of seeing ECG, what we used to apply while seeing ECG, the origin of rhythm, the progression of rhythm, and whatever the interruption happening, but where is the location of the problem? Because in ECG, what we are seeing are conclusive electrical activity. While with the help of EP, EP tracing, you are putting these electrodes, which you're putting here, on chest and limbs, now you are putting within the heart to see exactly where this electrical activity is coming from, going to. I used to say, my fellows, when even you're seeing ECG, think of seeing P wave. Is it originating sinus from anywhere else, atria? And there are ways of knowing that similar P wave, dissimilar P waves. Looking at the PI interval, again, you are what you're seeing, you're seeing the progression. Is it going in a normal way? So these all, I think these all being discussed by Kamran very nicely. So there's no need to further elaborate things on subject. But I'm going to conclusion in a way that please, please, all those, especially who are in training, ECG is, is, is really a golden tool and still it has the validity of making uh, important decisions Diverting decisions, ECG is the key of cardiologist. So always be so expert in that field, starting from basic till the end, even now in, with increments of EP as well, because you have to teach this art to other as well. It's not just that you, you can see and identify. No, you should be able uh, knowing everything in depth so that you can convey it to your juniors as well. Because this is the fun of this, it So with, uh, with that, I end my comments because already being discussed. Now you can just conclude things. And yes. again, I, I, I thank to Babar, Kamran Babar as well that he joined us. And uh, in future, I hope he'll be there with us. So, so let's start our next session. That is question answer session. Uh, we have few questions. Dr. Subair Mumtaz, do you hear me? Yes. The first question is, how do we uh, differentiate between ECG changes in hypercalcemia and hypothermia? Actually, you can see uh, Osborne waves in hypocalcemia also. Okay. So they are not uh, pathognomic for only the hypothermia, as I have already mentioned that. And uh, again, the scenario is very important. So the scenario of a uh, person lying in the searching or any cold place from that of a patient who is having any disease is different. So the scenario will help you out. Exactly. As Dr. Uh, Kamra Babar has mentioned that the scenario is very important. You are not commenting on ECG, but you are commenting on the patient. So. Scenario patient. plus ECG, yes. Scenario and a patient is uh, lead to your diagnosis, not only ECG. So the next question is uh, from you as well. That is how we calculate QTC interval from budget formula. It's written on the internet also. Okay. Okay. And I don't think so. 
uh, anyone can calculate in the examination because it takes a long and you need a calculator so you have to roughly estimate and and again you have to see the scenario okay the next question just, is uh, just one second okay. the simple comment i would like to just add on is um, when you're doing a qtc you take the measurement from the start of the q till the end of the t and many a times the t might be biphasic in the end so you just take a tangential line to the baseline and mark there the important thing that to remember is that the unit should be same in the numerator and denominator if you're using millisecond make sure you're using millisecond in both and if you're using second use the second in both so that your answer can come as correct this is a very simple thing but uh, it's just a matter of practice that you need to do okay great the next question dr subair uh, kindly give us differentiating point on uh, pacemaker ecg that is vvir and dddr dddr with uh, atl sensing and ventricular pacing again the same in single chamber pacemaker you will not see p e and q are together as i have shown an ecg in which there is atrial sensing and ventricular pacing but the p e and q are work together as we uh, usually see in our um, uh, wards in a patient with complete heart block when we put the epms you can see the p waves wandering here and there they are not uh, associated with the qrs because the lead is only in the ventricle it's not in the atrium so it's kind of an avid dissociation is there but pacing is in the ventricle channel so whenever you see p and qrs together it's always a dual chamber pacemaker either by pacing uh, atrium or by sensing atrium and pacing ventricle you mean that there is the av synchrony is must in dual chamber pacemaker dual chamber. either atrial until either the, until either atrial pacing or atrial sensing i think the av synchrony av synchrony is must in dual chamber yes it's While, the hallmark of the dual chamber dual chamber pacemaker exactly so uh, now in the end my last question is origin of vt on uh, surface ecg yes it's very easy look at the uh, lead v1 if whether it's positive or negative if it is negative or lvb type it's from the right side then you have to look at the inferior leaves they are whether they are negative or positive if they are uh, positive it means it's from the outflow tract or basal part so so the v1 helps you in differentiating the right and left and the inferior leaves help you out in basal and apical origin if the inferior leaves are positive it's basal origin and if the inferior leaves are negative it's apical origin then again uh, there are other leaves also which also help differentiating the uh, different types of the pts okay do you want to comment dr kamran babu i think mashallah what i have seen is that zubair has made ecg's uh, interpretation so easy i wish as a student if i had a teacher like him i probably would have become an electrophysiologist <laughs> thank you thank you sir it's an honor for zubair huh So in thank the you. end uh, uh, I am concluding this talk uh, thank you Dr Zubair for sparing time and thank you Dr Kamran Babar uh, th these sessions with not uh, only not help the junior consultant the junior doctors to get through your exam but it also helps junior faculty like Dr Zubair and myself to follow footprints of our seniors our teachers like Dr Fawad Farooq like Dr Kamran Babar to come in a streamline and uh, to have more exposure thank you very much here i conclude this talk and in the end i would like to th thank uh, farmivo for conducting such sessions and in next week in next uh, upcoming week we will have two sessions uh, one of from uh, eco stations and the other is uh, cat stations so stay tuned be with us inshallah there is more upcoming Okay thank Dr. you very much everyone thank you thank, thank you. you thank, thank you. you very much allah hafiz everyone allah hafiz take care sound